Throughout the history of main series Pokemon games, we've had some very iconic characters, from playable characters like Red in Pokemon Red and Blue, to NPCs like Cynthia, Riley, or even the Ball Guy in Pokemon Sword and Shield. There are a lot of other NPCs in these games though that aren't as remembered as the characters we just mentioned, but still take some sort of role in the Pokemon games they are from, and in some cases are in multiple different games. Today we'll be discussing some of these forgotten characters in Pokemon games that at least play some sort of role in the games and aren't just some random NPC in the back of a random house, and some of these characters you probably forgot about. The first character I want to talk about is Bellelba, who is one of the characters that actually inspired this video. This character is commonly associated with Bryson Man from the Pokestar Studios, who is Bryson's alter ego in Pokestar Studios. Now I've played a fair bit of Black and White 2 and I've played through it multiple times and I remember Bryson Man a lot while going to the Pokestar Studios, but I don't really remember Bellelba at all. Bellelba is most recognized from her Pokemon TCG Tag Team supporter card that she shares with Bryson Man called Bellelba and Bryson Man, a card that cost me getting top 4 at Elite Cup with my Bird Trio deck that I'm still salty about, but outside of that card, I really don't remember Bellelba in the games at all, and unless you're a Pokemon TCG player too, you probably don't even recognize her either. The most interesting part about her is that like Bryson Man, Bellelba is actually a gym leader. Bellelba is the alter ego of the Kanto gym leader Sabrina, something I didn't know until making this video. Now while the character Sabrina is very iconic and memorable, I'm sure a lot of people don't even realize that her alter ego was Bellelba. For the longest time I thought she was just some random character that appeared with Bryson Man, and when I learned she was Sabrina I was actually surprised. Similar to Sabrina, there's another character native to the Kanto region who played a pretty big role in the Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green games but hasn't really done anything since. The character is named Celio, another character you might recognize from the Pokemon TCG since there is a pretty old Celio card that was pretty good back in the day, but Celio is good friends with Bill, the guy who made the original Pokemon storage system in Kanto, and is the person who created the Pokemon Network Center in his hometown of One Island on the Sevi Islands of Kanto. You are tasked with helping Celio once you meet him in Cinnabar Island, and if you help him finish the machine then you'll be able to trade Pokemon from your copy of Fire Red and Leaf Green with Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald, and explore the rest of the Sevi Islands and complete the total of the post-game that exists in Fire Red and Leaf Green, and catch a lot more new Pokemon. This next character also has a prominent TCG card, but this one's from about 10 years ago, and her name is Felicity, and the card that she's from is called Felicity's Drawing. She appears in all of the Generation 4 Pokemon games, although it remained unnamed in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Her name was later learned thanks to the reveal of her TCG card, Felicity's Drawing, which came out before Pokemon Platinum, although once Pokemon Platinum came out, she was named directly in that game. She's the lottery checker in this game, which is called Felicity's Drawing, just like her TCG card, and you can even win a Master Ball from her, although the chances of winning a Master Ball are pretty low. Now this is going off script a little bit, but now that I think about it, I honestly don't even really remember if they ever did any other lottery type things in Pokemon games since Heart Gold and Soul Silver. This might have to go back with the whole renaming of the Gambler being Gamer, and now Pokemon has kind of been eliminating all Gambler references from Pokemon. So if there's some sort of other lottery system in Pokemon that I just cannot think about, please let me know in the comments down below. Now moving along to Sun and Moon, one of my favorite characters to appear in this game is Annabelle. She appears in the postgame and is partnered with Looker to investigate the Ultra Beast and the Ultra Wormholes. Her whole demeanor and detective persona in Sun and Moon reminds me a lot of Akane from the anime Psycho Pass, which is one of my favorite series, and although I'm sure that she is one of the more recognizable characters in this video, I'm sure there's a few people out there who don't know that Annabelle actually appeared in another Pokemon game over 10 years before the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Annabelle appears in Pokemon Emerald as the Frontier Braid in the Battle Tower, but how exactly did she end up all the way in Alola with Looker, a character who doesn't even appear in Pokemon Emerald at all? The story goes that about 10 years prior to the player meeting Annabelle in Pokemon Sun and Moon, Annabelle was actually found on the shore of Pony Island by Looker and Nanu who have been good friends. Annabelle forgot nearly everything about her past and only remember that she comes from the Hoenn region and was connected to some sort of tower, that being the Battle Tower. Looker suspects that Annabelle somehow fell into an ultra wormhole and was lost in it for years which resulted in her memory loss. This is one of the more interesting backstories about a Pokemon character you don't really hear much about, which only makes me appreciate Annabelle more as a character. She is one of the coolest teams out of any of the Frontier Braids in Emerald version as well, with her Silver Symbol team having an Entei on her team, and her Gold Symbol team having a Raikou and a Latios. Maybe if we ever see a return of the Hoenn Battle Frontier, we'll learn more about Annabelle's story. Now, I've mentioned this a few times, but I'll say it again. Team Flare is my favorite evil team in all of Pokemon, however there are a few key Team Flare members who are very forgettable. While Lysander and Zerosic are the two most memorable of the bunch, I always forget the names of these three Team Flare members. If I were to compare them to Team Rocket admins or Team Galactic admins, I remember most of their names, but not for Team Flare. These guys' names are Byrony, Celosia, Maybell, and Alania. And yes, I know I just listed four characters' names after saying there were only three, 
That's because in a recent video I mentioned there were only three of the Team Flare admins for getting the fourth and nobody commented or even noticed to correct me which shows just how forgettable these characters really are. These four characters we just mentioned are part of the five scientists or admins of Team Flare, with the fifth being Zerosic. You battle all of the scientists twice except for Zerosic who you only battle once, which is funny because he is more memorable than the other four scientists combined. All of these characters appear in the anime as well which I personally haven't seen, so I hope they're at least a little bit more memorable in the anime than they are in the actual games they appear in. Now we have to head all the way back to Kanto and a little bit of Johto for these next two characters. First we have Primo, the guy who was on the Tichi TV in Fire and Leaf Green, who we talked about in a recent video that I'll link in the description. He's the grandson of the old man of Viridian City who teaches you how to catch a Pokemon, and he is the twin brother of somebody named Maximo, who appears in Harkold and SoulSilver. Maximo is the host of the Pokeathlon that can be found in the Pokeathlon Dome. These two characters are pretty irrelevant, and although you most likely encountered at least one of them while playing through either of the games they're in, they're still very easy to forget, despite having a pretty fleshed out backstory and knowing a lot about their family tree. According to Bulbapedia, we even know Primo's age being 27, which I don't even know why we would know that. Now I almost cut this next character from the video since I thought he might be a little bit too memorable, but then I realized that he only appears in Black and White 2 in no other game. Now while Black and White 2 seem to be pretty popular games amongst people who watch my videos, it's still one of the least popular Pokemon games since it sold the least amount of copies to date, and I know quite a few Pokemon fans who actually never even played Black and White 2, which is a shame since they are arguably one of the best games in the franchise. Anyway, the character I'm talking about is Benga, the grandson of Alder. Benga appears after he defeated the champion, who was Alder. He wants to become a strong trainer just like his grandfather, and one of the coolest things about him is he is one of the very few characters in a Pokemon game that gives you a shiny Pokemon. In Black 2 gives you a shiny Gibble, and in White 2 gives you a shiny Dratini. He reminds me a lot of Ryuki from Pokemon Sun and Moon, a fan favorite character who also uses Dragon-type Pokemon. Some people even speculate that these two could be the same person due to their similar personalities and pretty similar appearance. While I'm sure there's plenty of other forgettable characters like the ones we've already mentioned, I just want to give a few honorable mentions to wrap up this video. First, we have Boba, who is actually the Safari Zone Warden in Pokemon Red and Blue. He is just referred to as the Warden in Red and Blue, and isn't known to be named Boba until much later on. And I just want to include him since the name Boba is a pretty cool name, and his anime counterpart actually points a gun at Ash, which showing this might get this video demonetized, but I really don't care. Boba appears in Harkold and Solsilor as well, where he opens a new Safari Zone next to Cyanwood City. While the Warden himself is pretty memorable, I'm sure that most people out there had no idea his name was Boba, and some people probably didn't even know that he appears in Harkold and Solsilor as well. And lastly, this character isn't from a main series Pokemon game, and it is first seen in Pokemon Coliseum, which I guess is close enough. The evil team in Pokemon Coliseum is known Team Snagum, led by somebody named Gonzap. I hope I'm saying that right because it's a very weird name to say. He has crazy facial hair, looks like a JoJo's character, has a really cool team, and is completely overshadowed by the much cooler and much more memorable Mirror B of Team Cypher with his signature Ludicolo. Gonzap's goal is to create a Pokeball that can steal other people's Pokemon, and with the help of Team Cypher, they can turn those into evil shadow Pokemon. Gonzap as well as Mirror B haven't appeared in any other Pokemon game since, but hopefully they are both revisited soon in a Pokemon game, whether it's Pokemon Masters or some other side game. And those are just some of the more forgettable characters that exist throughout the various Pokemon games. Let me know in the comments down below which of these characters you remembered or which ones you forgot, as well as any other forgettable characters in this video that I personally forgot about as well. Now if you made it this far in the video, consider leaving a like as it helps the channel a ton and keeps YouTube promoting my channel which is great, and subscribe so you don't miss any future Pokemon videos. Thank you all so much for watching, have a great rest of your day, I'll see you all next time, and bye bye.